Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. A quick announcement before you meet Dr. Edward Bynum joining me here today, the author of a fantastic book. There's so much in this book. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to start, but I know it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good because his book is really good. (laughs) I just show up and read the books. They do all the work. He's the one that had to write it. Um, but I'm really excited. And first, let me say hi to Benny. Hi to Jacob and Olivia. I know you're there as well. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. Um, I want to make a quick announcement before I do a formal introduction. Um, we're getting ready to move into the end of this year. And we've mentioned to all of you that our theme for next year is really simple. Every year we come up with cool themes. But this one, it's simple. It's 2022, it's all about you. And so when I say that, it's all about you, what I mean is you're going to be able to send us requests. You're going to be able to suggest what type shows you want. You've been doing that for 18 years, but you're going to be having more time to do it because it is time for us as we launch an anniversary year and our new technology to really honor every guest that's ever come through here, the powerful work they've done, the messages, the level of information, enlightenment, and knowledge that everyone has brought forth. And my very special guest today is in that category. You know, when you are someone that has a passion and a purpose for something, and you become that body of knowledge that the world looks towards, for that information. It is of the highest regard. And that's why for me today, you know, when I'm talking about Dr. Bynum, I'm talking about a clinical psychologist, I'm talking about director of behavioral medicine at the University of Massachusetts Health Services in Amherst. And uh, I'm talking about many, many, many more things. But what I'm talking about, too, is the journey we go on, especially when we're on the guided path of spirituality. And when we dig deeper and deeper and deeper, what is it we find in our truth? That's what today is about, as we get to really take that dive with him to talk about the African unconscious. We get to talk about our African unconscious, the Black origins of mysticism and psychology. And believe me, they are deep. Many of you recently heard me talk about Sam, and I've shared a little bit about him. My friend, my coach, and I got to know up close and personal his family and his family of origin. And his his family, he was the national champion table tennis player in Ghana, Africa. I got to know his mom. I got to meet his culture. I got to participate in it. And yet I could never possibly understand it at the depth that it needs to be honored and respected. And I try. Today, when you look, and I look back at that experience as a very young age to really meet the power of what we're about to talk about today, 
not just in the conversations, but in the, the essence and the cell of our origins and our humanity and our introduction into gratitude and caring for the earth and that level of integrity. See, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's the depth that this book takes us. It takes us on this journey. And yet we are shackled by our own fears that enable us to move forward in ignorance because that's what fear does. And today I have to honor this journey, this body of work. But when we are talking about African mysticism, we're talking about something very powerful, very ancient, that is at the core of who we are. And the longer we keep wanting to deny all of that, the more we keep separated from our true nature. Great to have you, Doctor. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm excited about being here and being able to talk about some of these, in many ways, epic new ideas coming from the frontiers of yeah. not only science and medicine, but also the great traditional deep reservoirs of spirituality all across the earth. And they come together in this book, they yeah. come together in our time, and they come together during this uh, very intense time in our history, in our society, in our culture. So I'm very uh, excited and feel privileged to be able to talk about it. I want to start at the get-go, if you don't mind. Um, Go ahead. I've been doing this show for a long time, and I, I don't come from a place of being a journalist, or I come from a place of having a mission 18 years ago, and I dialed the wrong phone number, and here I am, and that mission hasn't <laughs> changed. You know there's no such thing as a wrong phone number, right? <laughs> but here's what I love. I was at one of the weakest points in my journey. And what I realized about where I was then is I was so disconnected from my spiritual roots. I was so disconnected. I was struck by the opening of your book. May I read it? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. This is your dedication to my father, my father's, the memory of my father, to my sons, their sons and their daughters, to the spiritual destiny of the human race. That's one yes. of the most powerful sentences I think I've ever read. Can we start by talking about that? Yes, um, it, it was dedicated. A dedication came to me in a flash and it was dedicated to uh, my father, meaning father, my fathers who preceded me and my own individual father. Mm. So the fathers of my lineage, mm. cosmic, spiritual, ancestral, and familial. To my sons, and I have two, their sons and their daughters. They don't have kids yet, but they're going to. And ultimately to the spiritual destiny of the human race, because that is my ultimate purpose, goal, definition, and trajectory in this book. And I do mean spiritual destiny of the human race. I try to bring together in this book, not only our findings in contemporary medicine and science, including what goes on in our mother's womb and the process of evolution, but also the teachings of all, no exceptions, all the great spiritual traditions that all human beings belong to the same great family. We're all brothers and sisters. And this is our real destiny. And we are in many ways a species at war with itself. We can't seem to get around this notion. <clears throat> and we find it expressing itself on every continent. Sometimes in history, it's been more intense than in others. And right now we're having a really intense flare up again. But I believe because I am an optimist, I am an optimist. We will get beyond this point, including the climate crisis that we are on right now, that we will find a way to get beyond that. You know, every time that there has been a major climate change uh, on the earth, 
in the last several million years that a new species of us has arisen. Yeah. A new species, a new variation on a theme. And right now, the species that dominates the planet, us, are homo sapien sapiens, thinking man. Um, but we're at a unique time too, because we stand on the verge of potentially uh, creating a catastrophe that would be very difficult to dig our way out of. There's that. But we are also, for the first time in the history of our species, actually stepping off the planet. The days of purely military and governmental exploration of space are giving way to the commercial exploration of space. Yes. Think about the time between the Wright brothers, <laughs> Kitty Hawk, and the tinkering around in garages with the early automobile. And then 60, 70 years later, we're landing on the moon. Where will we be in a century? Hmm? Yeah. So we are taking a quantum leap in our evolution. And we will need all the spiritual guidance from our great traditions that we can, from the wisdom traditions of, of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and they're not that different, particularly in their central mystical expressions. And that's no surprise because as I point out in the book, Our African Unconscious, deep down, we all have the same nervous system. So it's no surprise that we've all evolved different on the surface, spiritual and mystical traditions, but when you actually look at the actual discipline, they're remarkably similar because our nervous systems are the same. Yeah. And we come out of the same evolutionary origin in Africa, and we have moved this far. You know, our species, Homo sapiens sapiens, we've only been around for maybe 150 to 200,000 plus years ago. Before that time, variations of us were walking around, Australopithecines and other Homo sapien types. And eventually they got either died off or got pruned out, who knows, but we're the last ones here. And so we lived in Africa for millennia, millennia. And then we began to move out like our earlier ancestors out of the continent to all the other continents on earth. And we all looked pretty much the same until about 25 to 35,000 years ago. That's when so-called surface racial diversification occurred. Up until that time for 150 to 180,000 years, we all looked like Africans. And I find that, and the fact that we all share the same deep spiritual paths, visions, desires, and tendencies, a very soothing, an inclusive mm. idea, a very affirming one that all the great spiritual traditions point to the same direction as does archaeology, anthropology, paleontology, population genetics, seriological blood studies. They all point to the same direction. It's no longer a debate. We're beyond that. That's the scientific consensus today and is backed up by enormous amounts of pretty airtight data. Yeah. So if we can recognize that, if we can look in the mirror and see beyond our surface distinctions, which are beautiful and important, but they're transient. We look into our deeper reserves, reservoirs, which is what every spiritual tradition tells us to do. Every woman, the Christian mystics, you know, the Islamic uh, mystics, the Hindu, uh, yogis, the Buddhists meditate, and they all say the same thing. If we do that, if you do that, then there's a science behind that. You will come and you will come to that realization. And it is a very warm and uh, reassuring realization. And it gives you pause for hope. It really does, particularly when we're experiencing the kind of fragmentation that we are right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, thank you so much for that. And 
this is not our first trip no down the uh dissection of humanity pathway you know this is not our first trip down here however nope. I think like you and like I, I, I feel that we are at a point now where we need a next level. And you know what I love about your book? I could have spent the whole hour just talking about, I could have spent the whole hour with you going into detail about the part of the book that talks about medicine, mathematics, and astronomy. I could have spent the whole hour because you take us back to what I love to talk about. And that is how much wisdom has, has been documented. And then we get our forgetter, like we have this forgetter, right? We do, we yeah, do. Right, right, you know what I mean? Yes. And, and so I found myself, just as you've written about here, and I want to talk in more detail about it, is I found myself talking on shows about some medicinal remedies that Sam's mother taught me. Sam Hammond was my coach. Uh, and I don't know if Jacob's got a picture, Olivia's got a picture. You, you guys can put that picture of Sam up for me. But I met his mom, a, a very prominent woman. And she shared some remedies. And I was talking about them the other day. And this is fascinating to me. Because in the first time in 18 years, I'm talking about my experience, and some of which you've documented beautifully, and I'm going to talk about Egypt in a minute with you, because I'm just like loving that. But you're, you're documenting some things that are so important to our existence today, yet somebody like me, I try to talk about them on air, and I find Facebook doesn't want me to do the show because some kind of clause about medical something or other. And yet what I'm talking about is a documented course in history. Your book yes. is brilliant with symbolism, documentation and facts, journeys forward. And I love what you talked about, about the fact that if we go back in roots, how many times is there a version of Mary in my, I'm just saying, now, yeah. some people may say Ganesh, not so much, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is, how could we show such similarities and in today's world, believe we are so different, doctor? Well, there's something about the human mind that uh, uh, <laughs> uh, needs to uh, move around and differentiate. That's, that's the job of the mind. It's to, it's to keep moving around. Any of you, you or, or folks who are listening to us, sit down for, and try to meditate, go into prayer, meditation. You'll find that your mind wanders all over the place. And that can be very frustrating if you're trying to make your mind one-pointed and so on and so forth. But you know the mind is just doing its job. It's moving around. It's observing. It's calculating. It can't sit still. It's like a drunken monkey. You know? It, it, that's that's what it that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed mm. to compare, analyze, calculate, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but that's not all the mind does. At a deeper level, the mind also has the capacity for attention. Attention is the root of the mind. And if you're involved in deep prayer or meditation, you realize that, even if it's difficult to sort of stay there. But the root of the mind is attention. You know, you, how many times as a speaker, someone gets up and says, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> right? It means I want, I want your focus. I want your focus. Because mm. when you have your focus, then you can do other kinds of things. Focus is like a laser. When you have your attention, you can do things with it. There is a, um, there's a statement uh, in the New Testament of the Bible that the Christ makes uh, when he says, um, uh, the lamp of the mind, the lamp of the, uh, uh, the lamp of the body is the mind. Okay, when your mind, when the mind is single, the body is full of light. That's not only a philosophical statement, but that is a scientific and methodological statement. 
when the mind is single, the body is full of light. Mm. Well, uh, learning how to do that in whatever way that your intuition brings you to it is well worth doing in your, in your life. And that is rooted in many events that happen in, as our brains develop in embryogenesis or our mother's womb. In the very earliest eight stages of our mother's womb, there's a little line of, of uh, what's called uh, uh, melanin in the, our mother's womb. And it has a, it's unusual, it has a direct current. Why is that important? Because as it stretches out, so to speak, it absorbs light, it absorbs quanta because it's dark and it absorbs it and transforms it to higher states of vibration and expression. And that is the whole job that happens in our mother's womb, that epic journey in our mother's womb. And out of that little line develops the, the, uh, the neural tube, out of that develops our spinal line, our brain, our different organs and so forth. So by the time of uh, nine uh, months, roughly, uh, the fetus has developed and is able, ready to come out and, and, and be on outside of the mother's uh, womb. And I might add here that um, at some point before we're born, by the way, before we're born, we are conscious. We're not conscious in the way that we think of ourselves now, but we are conscious in some way. And then we are born. And then we have our existence for X period of time. And then when we die and our brains stop, our hearts stop, we are still conscious for a certain period of time after that near death studies observed hundreds of thousands of times in the emergency rooms and so forth, testify to that. So mm -hmm. we're conscious for a certain period of time before birth and a certain period of time after death which is why the great spiritual traditions all say the fundamental reality is spirit and consciousness, not our bodies and not matter. And that has a scientific basis. I will emphasize that now. That has a clear, hardcore scientific basis. So again, the great spiritual traditions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Taoism, you keep going, and the great others, are now pointing in the same direction. And we have to get beyond this fragmented phase we're at now and make ourselves focused. Because again, as I said, we are about to step off the planet in large numbers in the next century. Yeah. And God knows what we'll find out there. So we need to have our act together. Yeah. You know? I, I know. And you know, what I love about this is, and I, and I want to talk with you about this, because when I'm reading your book, I love the way you bring us on a journey that is so pictorial. I'm a visual. So like, mm. I'm, you know, so I'm right there. Uh, until I got to the page where you put in the mathematical formula and then I was like okay I need to spend more time on that you know um it was bent off I think but as I went through this you can feel the connection see this is different than intellectualizing a conversation oh, with yes. you because yes. this book and your presence in it is covered with the mysticism and the spirituality and the journey and the connection of origins that you're writing about. So yeah. what I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm sounding a little abstract. Let me see if I can put it into words a little bit. You know, there's some books that I read that are really amazing and very, I get information. And then there are some books I feel. This is a book that we feel. So why is that? Why is that? Because as you go through it and you take us on a pathway and you talk about, wait a minute, Kundalini, Okay, that's right, spread of Af African mysticism. And, mm -hmm. you know, Osiris. And so when we go on this journey with you, you beautifully connect the pathway. And see, that's what I want to ask you about. Because if something is so easily connected in its pathway and its truth, what are the challenges? that you see us facing 
to embrace this because it's not going to be because you didn't write a book that explains it well. It's going to be something deeper, but boy, we are not going to succeed as a house divided. No, we're not. We, we cannot succeed as a house divided against itself. As Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Um, and even more so now that in order to solve the ecological crisis, mm. I can't stay in my backyard. We can't stay here in the United States. Other countries are doing things to the climate also. So we have no choice if we want yeah. to survive. And it is a matter of survival now. It is a matter of survival. Yeah. We work yeah. together with it. And we cannot simply command another nation to do that. We can't. We don't have the resources. We don't have the moral presence to do that. And we don't have the resources to do that. And those other nations also require us. So we have to cooperate. You know? Otherwise, uh, we won't uh, make it. Uh, why that is the case, I don't know. But, you know, uh, we have made it all the way from those early creatures of six million years ago, uh, those uh, uh, pre-human types of six million years ago when we broke away from the primate line, and then all through those different variations on a theme rising through evolution, you know, the uh, uh, Ardeopithecus ramidus, and then all those different Australopithecines, and then all the different variations of the Homo genus, and all the way till we got to our very our, ourselves. Each way despite missteps, misalignments, mistakes, ultimately we made the right choice. And I believe we're gonna make the right choice now. Yeah, uh, not I that do we too. Necessarily, not that we necessarily know what the right choice is before time, or before time, but we will make it when we're there. And part of that is that our intuition. Mm. Oh yeah. Our intuition tells us that in order for us to survive, I must embrace ultimately the humanity of someone else. Even if they don't look like me, sound like me, believe as I believe spiritually, but there is something deeper that connects mm -hmm. us. And that deeperness is what I try to outline in this book is our, our, our biological genetic inheritance, our spiritual inheritance, and our desire for transcendence. That desire for transcendence is rooted in our very biology, is rooted in our brains. We're constantly transcending ourselves. That is the kind of creature we are. That is the kind of creature we are. We're always transcending ourselves or seeking to. Mm. And that is what it makes us on this planet, anyway, unique. Yeah, awesome. I mean, you know, I often imagined I had a great upbringing, a little bit dysfunctional. Well, you know, my mom committed suicide when I was young, but my stepmom was genius in the way she raised us. And, you know, I've often wondered, you, you know, along the way, and she would have us ponder things, mm -hmm. right? She mm -hmm. would have us ponder questions, right? If we ever ask her a question, she would ask us a question back. So we got to take this journey with a woman that had her first child at 12 and her second child at 13. And what we learned from this and so many other things from her background, her heritage, and especially where I grew up, is the world of possibilities. I too am an optimist. I live in the, the I own a network called the Transformation Network, all positive talk, but when I read your book, I want to do something. And I want to take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about it. And what I mean by that is when I say, I want to do something. In my meditation, it's very clear to me when I ask to be guided. I ask every day. First of all, I pray one thing, God, universe, please please remove my fear-based thoughts. And then I ask, what is mine to do today? And I yes. keep hearing more. But when we come back from break, there's something in the energy of your work that shows us a pathway to that. And I would love to hear your vision for that when we come back. But before we do, how do people get a copy of the book? How do they find out about you? 
they can either uh, you can just go straight on to uh, uh, Amazon Books. Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon has the easiest way where you can <laughs> the publisher inner traditions. Oh yeah, uh, and this and it's for me. You can check me out on the on the website. Um, but the best way to get the book, which by the way is now an audio book, it's not going to be an audio book. So you can just pop it into your uh, uh, you know uh, playing device on the highway. Oh and, yeah, and, and as you're going to work or wherever you're going and listen to it that way. But I yes, yes. All right, and what's your website? Uh, www.obeliskfoundation.com, like the Egyptian obelisk. Yeah. www.obeliskfoundation.com. So when we come back. Remember, remember yeah. that image. Yeah. And by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, you're getting the website coming across and much more information. When we come back, you know, what I love to talk with you about is what I like to call the connection map. Not, not, the, not the map that says that we are different, but the, connect, the connection map. Because we are here today and you've nailed it. You know, everybody likes to laugh at Greta, Greta Thunberg. And now she's getting threats to her family, this young child, but she, will not go quietly in the night. And so what is it going to be for us as we look at our connectedness and not our differences that could bind us together? What are we gonna talk about as written in this book that literally shows the pathway? Literally shows the pathway. Because without this ancient knowledge, without the ancient medicines, without the oils of Egypt, without the roots in Peru, without any of these things that have been brought forward, would we have really survived as a species? Would we have really survived? When we come back, we're going to talk about our connection. We're going to talk about the pathway that take us beyond the limits, as it says in the book the limits of so psychodynamic insight. And boy, did I learn about those in school. Let's take a short break, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. Man, I gotta tell you, I, I look, I got Dr. Edward Bruce, find him on the show today for an hour. I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, Benny, we do have a copy of the book to give away. Okay. 1-800-930-2819. Uh, the book is called Our African Unconscious, The Black Origins of Mysticism and Psychology. And there's so much in the book. And of course, you can go to Amazon, by the way, to get the book. And I love that there's an audio. I love that there's an audio version of this now. Because yes. I can imagine hearing this now. I mean, re reading it, I'm like, I'm, I'm almost like I'm transmuted to a different point in time. Well, part of that, part of that, uh, I, I should say, yeah, uh, in uh, full disclosure, that uh, part of that is that I come from the oral tradition, and I'm also. Uh, uh, a poet. So those two kind of like <laughs> come together. And that may be some of what you pick me up on in terms of uh, language. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and that's what makes this so wonderful, because we have to learn. See, mm. my mom used to say in her, I can't do a, a great Southern draw, but, you know, she used to say, you know, girls, before my brother came, three girls, we, we, you all have a forgetter. You forget. And she would talk about that in terms of society as time went on, up until her death, actually, very sudden death. She would mm -hmm. talk about it. And I want to ask you this. Take us on the journey of the template. Take us on the journey 
of the unfolding as it is. And, and what we can openly remember about ourselves when we hear you talk about the African template. Well, the, uh, uh, we should say that in all, in many of the ancient uh, traditions, of, uh, traditions of wisdom in uh, ancient Greece, Rome, uh, Egypt, uh, the Middle East, uh, Asia, that wisdom was a matter of not discovering new things, but rather remembering. Plato and Socrates talked about wisdom as remembering something that was forgotten a long time ago. Yes, and so uh, we have a concurrence between our, our biological evolutionary development over the last six million years and what in many ways is recapitulated, repeated in the great journey in our mother's womb. And when we come out, those two streams have sort of come together. And if we're fortunate, if we're fortunate, we have the opportunity to learn and develop our, our brains, our minds, and our nervous systems. And uh, that is part of learning the wisdom traditions. Uh, knowledge is not always what we think. Hmm? It's not always what we can speak. For the, you know, for, if you've ever had a, a little kid uh, given birth to one or raised one, brother or sister, whatever, uh, before uh, two years old, you know, 12 months or two years old, you can see them thinking. They're reasoning something out and they're thinking clearly and intelligently, but they're not using words, are they? No. They're not using language, but they are thinking. And then our, and after a while, after two years old, roughly, our thinking and our language and our thoughts become so integrated with each other that it's hard for some people after a while to understand that their thinking of our shusha, their language is not the same as their thinking, which is not the same as their thoughts. And the great job of meditation is to begin to separate those so that you can remember your original wisdom. Your original wisdom. I don't think it's any accident. I didn't explore this uh, too far in the book, but I don't think it's any accident that most children who have memories of prior lives, you know, the research done by Dr. Ian Stevenson in the University of Virginia Medical School, thousands of cases, of corroborated cases of suggestive, very suggestive of reincarnation. Well, these memories start fading very quickly after three years old. Why? Because the forgetter, as you're calling it, steps in. The forgetter is often the family, often the, 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 the cultural zeitgeist that says, don't talk about this sort of stuff. And so the child begins to forget what their prior knowledge was. Hmm. Well, a similar phenomenon happens in wisdom. We forget that you know, we're not the only age of human beings that knew something. The ancient Egyptians knew something. 10,500 years before Christ, they erected a sphinx and looked directly into the vernal equinox on the spring, uh, 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 into, uh, I should say, the uh, constellation of Leo the lion on the vernal equinox. That's pretty precise. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, well, that's, totally. that's, no, that's no accident. No. You know, the lion body, head of a man, into the constellation of Leo, 10,000 pounds year, and the ancient Kemetic Egyptians said that is when their civilization was. They refer to that as the time of Zeptepi, the time, splendid time of the first time. So in deep meditation, deep meditation is possible to remember that. It is possible to remember that. You have to learn how to disassociate yourself from your contemporary mind which can be done, it takes discipline, but it can be done and allow the deep reservoirs of memories and flashes and intuitions often coming in dream states and others to arise. Yeah. And you can figure that out. You can actually see it. So uh, much of this is forgetting and then remembering again. 
Yes. I want to ask you about the world we live in today. I mean, and so much, in my view, gets healed when we can break down the barrier of differences. And so much gets healed. And I know this because I've, I've done some healing work along the way. Mm -hmm. um, some people believe that we have gone down a path too far to repair. I'm an optimist. I don't believe that. I've been down these paths before where, I, you know, for me, back like in 60 something or 70, I thought that was a path too far. I mean, <laughs> I, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, like when you're standing in a protest at a college uh, dorm and two people next to guy next to you get shot, you know, you're <laughs> thinking that is a path that we cannot repair. Right. But I think that that is a limitation that our mind plays. That is that psychodynamic nature I think you reference in the book, where yes. we underestimate our potentiality, right? Yeah, we're limited to our, 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 our current time in, in, in history, and we forget that there were darker periods in human history, uh, that human beings, yeah. uh, through discipline, work, belief, and transformation, came through, and not only came through, but triumphed. And that is, that is the nature of our species. That is the nature of our species. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is built into our nervous system. I do. Because of the onward unflowingness of evolution itself. The embryo goes from a primitive state to a more articulated state in our mother's womb. And the brain gets more complex and so forth. The same happens when we're outside of the mm -hmm. womb. The same thing happens in societies. Okay? Um, so... We are a species that is constantly seeking transformation. And our great religions have all come at a time when the human species was at a crisis point. And then some great teacher, some great avatar yeah. well, uh, appeared on the scene. Yeah. It could be Mo Mo uh, Muhammad, uh, Jesus the Christ, uh, mm -hmm. Krishna, uh, the Buddha. They appeared and they brought a new vision, a new transcendent vision of our species. And it, 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 it built upon what was there before it and added to it and opened it up enormously. Well, I believe that we're at a similar time now, again, because of the crisis we're in climactically uh, and otherwise, and the fact that for the first time we are stepping off the planet again. So yep. we're in a different stage of our evolution. We have to rise to the occasion. We have to rise to the occasion. And there will always be darker forces pulling us back. There will also always be uh, fear and, uh, and trembling and, and alienation and doubt and uh, uh, lack of faith and uh, a, a, you know, a, uh, a sense of uh, 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 terror that grips our inner being. But that's when we take a leap of faith. <laughs> that's when we take the leap of faith. I totally get it. And, you know, let's just put things in perspective, you know, from, from the book. What I love is when you talk about we're stepping off, right? So mm -hmm. when you go back, people that left one region of where they live mm -hmm. to the next one was the equivalent of us yes. going to the moon. Yes, it right? was. And if we can't, we have to think like that, right? Yes. You, you know, yes. but that's the way think about it coming over coming over here on a boat that was like stepping off that was off the world that was, it. <laughs> that, was that was like you know the folks who came out of africa and they and they went up into the middle east and they went up to europe they, they didn't know it was europe they just right. knew it was out there right and they adapted to the climate change their surface physiognomy changed but they remain the same species on the inside. Those who went in the eastern directions and they went up to the Middle East and they went up to Southeast Asia and then they went across the island chains and they eventually got to uh, South America up in the island chains when the ice age sucked up all the water and the, the islands provided a pathway. They didn't know that was South America. No. They just knew that they were, they were impelled by some internal force to do this. Yeah. Well, we're the same creature. We are their progeny. 
And now we are about to do that to the vast reaches of interstellar space. Yeah. We have to develop a consciousness commiserate with that expanded view of ourselves, our minds, our souls, and our consciousness. And I tried to outline very clearly as much as I could in our African unconscious, the black origins of mysticism and psychology, yes. how the mystical origins became the science of psychology and how we are still in the process of transformation and that we have to continually remember to say yes. Mm. You know, I know we only have a few minutes left, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you this question. I am fascinated by what we're calling the Dead Sea Scrolls now. Mm. I don't know if we'll continue to call them that. Um, something so profound is so is talked about so little. I've kind of wondered about this. But, you know, your book explains why we're not talking about it, pretty much. But it's another piece of a puzzle, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's another piece of a puzzle. And all roads lead to home. And what, mm -hmm. what I grew up with understanding about that is the home that my, my mom talked about was our true nature of discovering yes. the truth of who we are. Yes. And in the time we have left, I would love to hear your vision. I would love for you to share when you look ahead. What do you see, doctor, when you look ahead? What do I you see? see? I see the coming together of science, medicine, with our ancient spiritual traditions, the recognition that we literally are luminous beings, beings of light. And I, I, I tried to explicate that in several chapters in the book, talking about neuromelanin, embryogenesis, those scientific ideas. But the basic idea is that our nervous system is designed to be guided by light. Our nervous system is designed to be guided by light, absorbing quanta and information. From the day, the first hours after conception, we have a quantum relationship with the universe, which by the way, expands throughout the universe, the quantum. And at the moments of death and beyond, we reemerge into that more fully. So we are, we are quantum beings, we are luminous beings. And our science, is now at the point where we can verify that. Mm. We can actually verify that in hard scientific and medical terms, which is what I tried to do here. Because uh, we are on a transformative uh, journey. It is an epic shift in not only our consciousness, but the consciousness of this planet. And our destiny is yet to be made. It is, and it is somewhere in the stars. We're going to look back on this someday. We're going to look back on this someday. We're going to recognize that this was the childhood, the infancy of our species. <laughs> mm. we made it uh, through. No kidding. I mean, it's not a surprise to me that after decades and decades, this year, the Pentagon released its special report. And that special report, uh, really, the release of this information was buried in a bill that was passed last year, right? It was a little thing in there that says, you got to release all the UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't quite put like that. It was put a little bit more legalistically. But the point was, it released information. Yes, it did. That people had been locked up in jail for yes. saying they experienced, right? Yes. Yes. Don't you wonder... I think the Pentagon has known for a long time and in an attempt to protect us because mm -hmm. we weren't ready. We no. weren't ready. <laughs> and they probably sat around and, and correctly decided it would take three generations for us yeah. to get our act together so that we're not, we don't flip out yep. when it's announced. Now, if you came out with a report on, on NBC or CBS, you'd find the vast majority of people would say, yeah, I always kind of knew that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because we're now at the point where it's like we've had enough, quote, movies, unquote, oh. television shows, and quote, books to sort of plant the seed and normalize it. And so they can sort of admit it. 
But if that had been acknowledged back in 1948, I'm sorry. No, it would have been. It would have been. It would have been uh, a crisis on the planet. So oh, I think yeah. they made the correct decision mm -hmm. and said, you know, it's going to take eh, probably three generations, and then we can sort of like let it out. And they're letting it out. Just read yeah. between the lines. It, and other nations, uh, Russia, uh, yeah. Mexico, other countries have said, yeah, they're here. It's only yeah. here in the United <laughs> States that we haven't come out officially totally and said, yeah. So it's here. We are an interstellar species. We're going to be. We have been uh, groomed for this for a long period of time. And I think that it, we're at the point now where we are almost mature enough, almost mature enough to do this. We have, if we will listen to our great spiritual traditions and take them seriously, take your spiritual tradition seriously mm. about all human beings are the same we're all brothers and sisters there's no need for this fragmented hostile whatever but recognize our deeper template identity and our consciousness that will allow us to expand that consciousness considerably and prepare for the next stage in the evolution of our species yeah. which we're preparing to do Thank you so much for today. I want to thank you, first of all, for joining me here today. Um, uh, I could have gone on and on and on. And there's so much in here. Um, you, you know, I will make sure I reach out to Ashley so I can have you back if you would come back in a future day. Oh Absolutely. my gosh. Thank you for everything you're doing. And thank you for reminding us of the power of optimism and spirituality. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much for that. Wow, let's take a short break. Everybody, we'll be right back.